another often used so frequently abused passage John 3.16 Well, by way of introduction, let's look at verse 16 and 17. Four things I want to bring out. In the first place, there is absolutely no question the love of God is made manifest to this whole world in Jesus Christ the Lord. Secondly, it says he gave. There's no question that this is all by grace. And in verse 17, condemnation is not the message. The message is salvation. Simple, very simple. We're going to be discussing, starting in verse 18 now, and in verse 18, it says, He that believeth. Now that word believe means to entrust or to commit with confidence, with hope, with, with uh, reliance, to credit the individual as being very worthy and to respect with a very high and a special kind of of regard. There ain't no condemnation there. There's no condemnation there whatsoever. In trusting Christ, in committing to Him, in respect Him, high regard, there's no condemnation there whatsoever. I assure you that those to whom Christ reveals Himself there is absolutely no condemnation, no unbelief. But I'm also equally sure that if he does not reveal himself, one will abide in unbelief and die in unbelief and scream throughout eternity because of their unbelief. But then secondly... It says, he that believeth not, middle part of verse 18, <clears throat> this kind of an individual is condemned already. Now I want you to notice um, in verse 19 for just a moment. We're going to jump to that and come back to 18 in a minute. This is the condemnation. Not a. A would be one of many. The is singular. And in the Greek, when they do that, they, they really mean to stress that. This is this one condemnation. And that is, light came into the world, and men didn't like that. And so, <clears throat> man is condemned because of his unbelief. Now, <clears throat> that condemnation and that unbelief came by birth. You see that in Romans 5.12, came by birth. And as man, being born under the sin of Adam, already unbelieves, is already a condemned person. And so it is very true to say that one that believes not is on the edge of dropping off into a godless eternity to scream forever and ever because of their unbelief. Now, <clears throat> I think this is funny. There is not an Islam person or Muslim, whichever way you want to say it, in this world that doesn't know the name Jesus Christ. Not 
whole one. I don't know about in China. I know this. The Muslims all know the name Jesus Christ. They hate it. They hate it. And so he says in verse 19, this is the condemnation. Light has come into the world. They know that name. They know that light that is presented by Christianity. And men love darkness rather than light. Recently, a plane went down or landed in some forlorn place or whatever. I was talking to a friend and I said, it's not an accident. Whoever did it, did it on purpose. Did you read the news? They went into both the pilot and the co-pilot's house and took out things that would help them to ascertain whether they were guilty or not. Right now, they believe one or both of them were. Well, <clears throat> for a person to do that, they have to love darkness. Christ would not lead anyone that path. And so he's clear and he says right here this morning, men love darkness rather than light. Why do men love darkness rather than light? Because their deeds are evil. They know they're set about to do evil. That's what they're taught. Not just Islam, not just Muslims, but all the false religions of the world. They're taught to do that which is contrary to normal human behavior. They're taught to do that which is contrary to godly behavior, which was, oh yeah, believing on him that was holding Christ in a special regard, they hold themselves in a special regard. And so they, uh, they show themselves by their evil <coughs> deeds. Now Christ is the light. You cannot know of the name of Christ and not know something of what he stands for. It's just not possible. And they know what he stands for, but rather than to bow to what he stands for, I'm just picking not just on the Muslim, but all false religions. Rather than to bow to him and what he stands for, they love their darkness. They love their evil deeds in spite of the person of Christ. And the reason, point E, that they hate him so much, fear of exposure. Now, there's a day coming when that exposure is going to be plumb plain. He's going to gather the unbelievers on his left side and his family on the right. And he's going to show the difference. And he's going to expose their deeds in a day of judgment. And indeed, he shall. They cannot... Before him, hide their deeds. They may before man, but they cannot before Christ. 
And so that brings us to point number four then. Lovers of Christ. I want you to get in on this because this is a very powerful, simple, simple thought. Verse 21. He that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought by God. That little word in should be by, in the original language. A believer acknowledges, if it's good, God did it. All credit to him, all praise and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ both now and forever. In closing, condemnation is not the message of Christ. Paul was preaching to Felix. I was reading that in reference to this message. And he preached unto him righteousness and temperance. And Felix said, go Come back another time. Only have your pocket loaded with money. I want some money to set you free. But Paul didn't stand up there and condemn Felix. Paul stood up there and held forth the grace of Christ. The message is not condemnation. God did not send his son into the world to condemn, but to present the message of salvation. Now the false world is going to have all sorts of condemnations, plural. But Christ's one salvation, and that's by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That'll help you give it some thought.